Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so I was doing a transcript of Boyd Bushman on anti-gravity. It's a video I saw a long time ago, but really didn't ring true to much of what I understood at the time, but I revisited it recently. I do remember that it was referring and connecting a range of different things. It first started with the Hutchison effect, and then he went on to say that, you know, his company where he'd been working, which was Lockheed Martin, which is a major defence contractor in the United States, they had been looking at where the next energy levels were coming from. And he specifically says, I'm not referring to wind or solar or even atomic. And he says that gravity had a relationship as far as he was concerned, to magnetism. And he actually produced an experiment where he took some very strong uh, neodymium magnets and he put a brass bolt between them where the, say, the south and south or the north and north are facing each other and he dropped them from a high building along with an analogue of the same thing but just the same mass in a sphere. And the one with the magnet in always arrived later than the one that didn't have the magnet in. And so... He kind of relates that to Newton's nightmare or the Lenz's law, which you can see here. And I'll give all the links to what I'm referring to here. And it's just where you drop a magnet through a conductive material. It produces an electric current in the conductive material. And this causes its own magnetic field. And it slows the path of the magnet through the tube. And this is something that I will come on to later. It's very specifically important to some of the experiments that we've been doing in recent years or studying. Anyway, so he talks about that, and then he talks about the fact that if you compare E equals mc squared and sort of expand it out as uh, Newton would have done, you end up with seven significant forces, and there's a number that we don't know about. Well, it's interesting that he did that, but before I go on, I want to talk about this magnetic test that he did. And uh, what I did is I've created um, this, which is I've got a brass screw here, uh, here and uh, I have uh, two magnets which I've uh, screwed this screw into a wall plug and I'll have a video where you can see um, a close up before I put this together and I've actually put the opposing poles together so you've got north here and north here or south here and south here so it's not north south north south it's uh, trying to get uh, themselves apart in this case you have them so that they are in line with each other. And I just want to show you the kind of field difference between these two. So if I start here with the standard kind of magnetic arrangement, and I have some Magnaview paper here, and if it's black, I think the field's coming out, and if it's white, it's going across the paper. Okay, so here's the standard magnet configuration, and I have put some quartz crystals there just to hold it in place, otherwise it points to magnetic north or to any metal that's in the table and it runs away from me. So I've just got that there like that. And if I come down on top, you can see the sort of field configuration that you get from a standard two magnets put together and you get that sort of dead space in the middle there. Okay, so I'm gonna compare that here now with the little uh, jerry-rigged up uh, thing here, which uh, I've got the north and north facing each other, let's say, and look at this, it's very, very different indeed. So there's kind of like a, a beam coming out to the side, and then you obviously have a south to one side and a south to the other side. So it's a very, very different configuration. And in fact, if you actually take uh, this one now, and we put it, say, on there, uh, we get an even uh, more sort of focused beam. Um, and if you look at this, look. So we have this kind of beam coming out here. And this, I imagine, was the kind of process that Boyd Bushman went through to come up with his patent. And here is a still from a video, which I'll give the link to, but it's a simple model of the configuration in Boyd Bushman's patent. And essentially, you have these large, strong neodymium magnets, and uh, I don't know if you know, but if the diameter and the, the length are the same, basically, that's about as strong as you can get it before it starts not paying dividends. So if you want to get even stronger magnetic force, uh, he came up with this configuration. So you've got all the souths pointing to this central node here, and then you have one side that doesn't have a magnet on it. And this produces a magnetic beam in one direction. And what you could consider is that you've therefore got a kind of pseudo-magnetic monopole. It's actually not a real monopole. It's kind of got a, a suppression 
on the north compared to the ability of the south to uh, go out further. And you could do this with the poles reversed. He also has a configuration where you have an electromagnet here or a supplemented permanent magnet with an electromagnet around it. And this allows you to produce pulses uh, of magnetic energy, as it were, or magnetic beams coming out in a particular direction. And there's a number of uses for this. In fact, there's a patent. If you have the poles together, this patent says that you have an increase in the density of the physical vacuum, and this causes stabilization of material. And if you have very strong magnets in this kind of arrangement, and you have a radioactive material in between them, this causes a reduction in the stress in the physical vacuum, and radioactive materials would accelerate their decay. And this is interesting because gravity and the physical vacuum have been talked about as being related in terms of neutrinos for a very long period of time. And this brings me back to what is being said by Boyd Bushman in this video, which intrigued me so much. At the end of the video, having connected the Hutchison effect to next energy levels uh, that are not wind, solar or atomic or anything like that, and the fact that this magnetism is related to gravity, he then says this. Well, there is another universe called the neutrino universe, of course. We know that it's there, and now we were seeing if one of the additional forces matches it. Not only that, we know that everything that we see is about 5%, and then there's dark matter that we don't see, and then beyond that is about 70% of dark energy, and that's what we're talking about. The energies that we don't now have catalogued, and we don't have name for, and we haven't done critical tests on, and that we're just barely beginning to start operating with. Effectively what it's saying here is this neutrino universe is part of the overall universe, but it's not something we normally consider. And, you know, we're only normally aware of, let's say, 5% uh, of the universe, and about 75% or 74% is this other type of energy and matter in the universe. And in page 67 of Space Earth Human by Alexander Parkamov, you can see this chart where he's talking about uh, the uh, different matter and energy components of the universe. And this is essentially what uh, Boyd Bushman is talking about here. And he's saying that of the dark matter, there is a uh, 0.1 to 2%, which is uh, the neutrinos in the uh, universe. And so uh, he's kind of potentially talking about accessing this uh, material. So uh, there we have it. We have Boyd Bushman connecting antigravity to Hutchison to the neutrino universe uh, to magnetism and being able to focus magnetism and uh, accessing potentially this energy. What I have here is two ND52 magnets, and I have a brass screw and a wall plug, and I'm going to screw these two together such that the same pole is pushed together. I'm using a pair of Gerber pliers and holding the wall plug and the standard flathead screwdriver to screw it in. Here's the finished item, which is something that I can easily hold in my hands. So here is a standard cathode ray tube, and I'm going to hold up this magnet to it, and we'll see what it does. Okay, as I bring it in. Okay, so you can see it's very, very tight field. If you turn it around 90 degrees, you can barely see anything. Let's move it over here. And over here. Rotate it round. Okay. Now the interesting thing is that we're still seeing green above and red below and <laughs> They're both the same poles facing towards each other, so if I push these together... Okay. 
Green above, red below. Now turn it all the way around, what do we see? Green above, red below. Green above, red below. Green above, red below. Green above, red below. And so what I have here, I'll have just a straight magnet here. And I'm gonna put that on there. So you get this kind of field. Good for your CRT screen. Okay. Okay, and this one, very different, so very, very different field structure. This next test is with the magnets uh, in alignment. So it's going uh, south, north, south, north. So it's kind of doubling the strength. And you'll see it's a very different effect. Very, very different effect. In this test, I actually have the opposite poles uh, push together, so whichever it was north or south last time, push together. If it, sorry, if north north together, it's now south south together. Um, so we'll see if this uh, does anything different. Okay, so again, it's whatever's going on is highly suppressed. Look at it here, basically no effect. The two magnets, very very different effect than when you have them together. I mean, that's it, really. I hadn't seen this done before uh, by other researchers. Maybe there is someone that's done it before, of course. Um, but certainly in that orientation where it's most extreme when you've got the magnets together, there's almost nothing you can see Yeah, I'm touching the glass. There might be slightly different magnetic strength around it. So if I ever rotate it around, I'm getting a little bit of red there. If I rotate it there, it's basically nothing observed. You can see something there if I rotate it around. Yeah, in some planes there's almost nothing. In this image, where we have the north-south, north-south, you can see on the right side of the paired magnets, you have red on the top and green on the bottom, and this shows the spin in one way. And on the left side of the paired magnets, you have the red on the bottom and the green on the top. That's the spin in the other way, so you've got the two vortex there. If you actually look at the magnets which are arranged in the north-south, south-north configuration, we don't see any of this, and uh, it's only until you rotate it so it goes horizontally you see a little bit of color above and below, uh, but it doesn't seem to matter which way up it is. And this may actually be bleed through uh, from the hole through the magnet. I don't know because it may be that Boyd Bushman had a specially configured one where it had a screw thread on the inside, and so there was no sort of hole going through. Certainly, we can see from the earlier test that there's a slight imperfection and this may cause a uh, bleed out from the side. Anyway, I'd like you to um, say what you think about what's going on here and why we don't see any influence on, uh, of any real note on the electrons coming from the cathode 
ray gun and hitting the phosphor on the screen compared to when you have them in the north-south-north-south configuration. So thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.